Welcome to New Possibilities. I speak truth to power without fear. So, as you all know, I've done a series of videos about the bombings that have taken place in Austin, Texas, and the suspect has been identified. His name is Mark Anthony Condit, and I'm going to talk about how he was identified and what happened after he was identified. And then I'm going to provide some basic information about him that's available. And I'm going to provide my commentary, of course. So for those people who are unfamiliar with the situation in Austin, Texas, I'm going to provide a brief summary. So you had a series of bombings that took place there. Packages were left on three people's uh, front porches. When the people handled the packages, the packages exploded. Now, the first two victims were African-Americans, and they were targeted for these bombings. The first victim, Anthony Stephen House, was a 39-year-old African-American. A second victim was Draylon Mason, a 17-year-old African-American boy. And apparently those packages were directed towards those two individuals or their families. A third package exploded and injured a Hispanic woman who was 75 years old. According to some reports, she was not the intended victim. Someone else was the intended victim, and many have speculated that the intended victim was an African American. And then after that, there was um, a bombing that took place on a public street, from what I understand. The bomber placed a trip wire and two white. Uh, men were injured in that bombing. And then you had a, one bomb explode at a, a Federal Express uh, storage facility or shipping facility. And another bomb was discovered at a FedEx as well. I think the other bomb was in Austin. And the, the um, first bomb that I mentioned at the Federal Express was at a location in San Antonio. So the police were able to track this um, suspect through FedEx. You know, since some of the packages were delivered through FedEx, they were able to check the video cameras and they were able to capture the suspect on camera. And from there, they were able to get information um, about his cell phone and, you know, able to track him using his cell phone. And they got information about his vehicle. And they were able to use technology to track him down. You know, they were able to use what's called cell phone uh, triangulation, where they're able to locate someone. As we all know, a lot of cell phones have GPS devices on them. And they were able to ping his phone, to locate his phone. And also, once they identified him, they were able to scour his Google search history to gather all kinds of information about him, I'm sure, about his uh, history and different transactions. And, you know, the video of him going into the Federal Express uh, office, of FedEx, uh, was able to lead them to him. So they tracked him down to a hotel in Round Rock, Texas, about 20 miles north of Austin, Texas. Um, and once they arrived at the hotel, he had already left. You know, he left the hotel. And then eventually SWAT was able to identify his vehicle. And when they approached his vehicle, he detonated a bomb and he killed himself. And so he hasn't, you know, he wasn't arrested because he's dead. You know, so right now there's not a lot of information about him. Now, I went to a couple of sites to see what kind of information there is out here about this person. And before I go into that, let me say this. You know, right now, the authorities aren't sure if he acted alone. They're not ruling out the possibility that he had accomplices. Also, they're concerned that there may be other explosive devices that are planted or that have been shipped. So we don't know if this threat is completely over. Um, we don't know if this situation is resolved. And we don't know if the people of Austin, Texas, and around the country, frankly, can rest at peace right now, can 
can uh, relax or have some sense of resolution because we don't know if this guy um, acted alone or not. Now I'm going to go to um, some information or some articles about this uh, young man and this is his photograph um, right here as you can see you know there's a couple of articles that I read about this killer and before I go into that let me just say this you know I just find it um, I guess it can't you can't say I'm I can't say that I'm surprised to hear this or to see this phenomenon but no one has described this guy as a terrorist you know this is somebody who targeted people with explosives he literally blew people up and then he blew up himself you know he was a suicide bomber at the end of the day you know he exploded a device in his own vehicle and he killed and injured several people but I don't see anyone referring to him as some kind of terrorist or even applying that label to him. You know, there's been speculation about whether or not he was motivated by hate, and we'll get into that in a second. But let's go over some of the information uh, that's publicly available about him. You know, they have searched his social media, and apparently he, his social media accounts went quote-unquote dark during the weeks leading up to the string of um, package bombs, according to the governor. Um, also, there's not much information on whatever social media is available. Um, according to some of these reports, there were no red flags, according to people about, you know, there were no red flags about this guy, like no examples of him engaging in disturbing type of behavior. Like, for instance, in that, um, you know, the recent case involving a, a mass shooting, you know, there had been all kinds of warning signs. And that was Park, I think it's Parkland, Florida, where you had the guy go into a, um, a school and shoot all these people and all that stuff. Um, there were all kinds of red flags in that case, you know, people warning about this guy potentially being violent. But in this situation, there were no warning signs about Mark Anthony Condit. Uh, so that just raises even more suspicions. Right now, we still don't know what motivated him. Now, I was looking at this article from, um, let me go to the top of it, uh, from heavy.com, where they cite five fast facts about um, Mark Condit. And one of those facts that they cite is the fact that he um, had a blog. But before I go into his blog, they also pointed out how he was homeschooled and how he attended Austin Community College. They say that he has no known criminal record. And um, again, they pointed out how he has this blog here. It's a political blog. And this is what he says on the blog. Like when he talks about himself, he says, my name is Mark Condit. I enjoy cycling. Um, he talks about tennis, reading, and listening to music. Uh, he says, I'm not that politically inclined. I view myself as a conservative. So he views himself as a conservative. So I think that that says a lot, but we need more information about his ideology. You know, what kind of conservative is he? And then he goes on to say, but I do not think I have enough information to defend my stance as well as it should be defended. The reason why I'm taking this class is because I want to understand the U.S. government and I hope that it will help me clarify my stance and then defend it. So apparently he created this blog for, for school. You know, and on here he um, mentions his views on different issues like um, gay marriage, abortions, um, you know, he also talks about people being registered as uh, sex offenders. He has a, um, a blog here about his position in favor of um, the death penalty. And he has this article where he complains about the release of a terrorist and he provides his opinion. And the odd thing is he is a terrorist. You know, he is the one who is actually a terrorist. It's just ironic that he would be writing 
and complaining about the release of a terrorist when he in fact became a terrorist. And that brings me to this point about terrorism. It's like the media, if this was an Arab or a Muslim who committed these acts, you know, committed these bombings, they wouldn't have hesitated for a second to describe that Arab as a terrorist. You know, if it was anybody else, they wouldn't have any problem describing them as a terrorist. But for situations involving white men, for some reason, they can't find it in them to describe these people as terrorists. You know, I'm really interested in finding out more information about what kind of things did he search for on Google. You know, I'm sure that information is going to come out um, eventually. You know, I want to know, like, if he had any affiliations with any hate groups. I want to know that. I mean, what caused him to target two prominent African-American families? What was his motivation? Why did he set up that tripwire? And also, who trained him? How did he learn how to create these sophisticated devices? You know, it was my uh, suspicion that he was military. He was ex-military, but so far that hasn't panned out. There's no information indicating that he was in the military. So how did he get this training? Who taught him how to make these bombs? And these are sophisticated weapons, from what I understand, from what has been reported. This is not some, you know, makeshift type of devices that this guy created. These were deadly devices that injured people and killed people. So there are so many questions. You know, I am glad. That, obviously, I'm glad that they found the suspect, you know, um, and it's a shame that he can't be interrogated so we can find out what his motivations are. I wonder what they will find in his home. Apparently, they're searching his home to see what else, what other kind of evidence there is about his motivation. But, you know, again, I wouldn't be surprised if his motivation was hate, you know, if he wasn't acting um, uh, in a way to further some kind of racist or white supremacist agenda. But so far, we don't have any concrete evidence of that. So I'm going to continue following this situation and tell me what you think about this. You know, I'm really concerned about whether or not he had people help him. And I want to go back to one aspect of this case is, you know, how they were able to track him down, you know, using technology. Um, you know, while it's great that law enforcement is able to gather this information in such a quick period of time and stop potential bombings, you know, that's one of the great things about technology. You know, that it's able to gather this information and it's, and it's able to, you know, make it easier for law enforcement to stop criminals. But at the same time, it raises great concerns about our civil liberties. You know, these devices that we use so much on a regular basis, you know, that have become a part of our lives have also been um, a vehicle by which Big Brother, you know, the government can violate our civil liberties. You know, our devices have all kinds of personal data in them. You know, photographs, they keep track of our locations, where we travel, um, where we are. Also, there's information about our internet usage, like what sites we visit, what Google searches we conduct, you know, what kind of social relations we have on social media, like who our friends are and who our connections are. I mean, there is a wealth of information that can be gathered from social media and from this technology. And in the wrong hands, that is very frightening. It is frightening to know how much information the government has access to. And again, while I celebrate, you know, the fact that they were able to track down this killer, this monster, this terrorist, I am also concerned about all of our civil liberties, you know, innocent law-abiding people and their information being accessible to the government. So tell me what y'all think. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. Peace.